Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Andrew Olson, and you are watching another Classic Cinema Review. So is Your Aunt Emma, directed by Gene Yarborough and released by Monogram Pictures in 1942. Spinster Emma Bates, but everybody calls her Aunt Emma, reads that boxer Mickey O'Banion, son of her old flame prize fighter Gentleman Jim O'Banion, is set to meet Tiger Wilson in the ring. However, she learns that O'Banion isn't as sensible about his lifestyle as his father, and takes it on herself to go see the young boxer in the ring. Terry Connors, a reporter at the Daily Globe, is about to leave work to marry his fiance Maris down at City Hall when he is ordered to interview Rex Crenshaw, attorney of mobster Flower Henderson who is set to put rival mobster Gus Hammond on the spot uh, before the grand jury. Well, Terry doesn't learn anything from Crenshaw and misses Crenshaw's kidnapping plus the scoop to go with it right after he leaves the office. Terry also misses his own wedding, Maris breaks up with him, and on top of all that, Terry is reassigned to cover the O'Banion-Tiger Wilson fight that evening. Aunt Emma and Terry meet at the ticket window. With no ticket and the fight sold out, Aunt Emma is out of luck, but Terry gives her his spare ticket, starting an unlikely friendship between the two. Terry spots Gus Hammond, who is both mobster and Mickey O'Banion's uh, manager. Hammond comes right out and denies any involvement in the Crenshaw kidnapping. However, Terry only wants to know in which round Mickey will win. Hammond assures him that the fight is legitimate. Of course it is. But two of Hammond's henchmen, in the meantime, mistake Aunt Emma for notorious gun mall Ma Parker and assume she's working for Flower Henderson. Meanwhile, Flower Henderson himself plots to use Mickey against Gus Hammond, hoping they will lead him to where Crenshaw is being held. After the fight is over, Aunt Emma and Terry visit Mickey in his dressing room to give him a little uh, sage advice, and after that, decide to team up to investigate Flower Henderson's uh, nightclub, looking for a story. Maris, to Terry's dismay, is the club's new singer. Soon Mickey and his date, Zelda, who was planted to set him up, arrive at the club. Terry does some investigating and learns Mickey is being set up by Flower to get to Gus Hammond, and Aunt Emma has a good vantage point from the bar when Gus Hammond finally arrives at the club. Everyone is in place for some action to occur, but can Aunt Emma and Terry keep Mickey out of trouble and find Crenshaw? And what about Terry's bruised romance with Maris? Well, folks, no hints from me. So is Your Aunt Emma, also known as Meet the Mob, is a comedy. It's a B-movie with a runtime of roughly 62 minutes. It's a lighthearted and rather delightful film about an old lady or, or an elderly lady and a reporter taking on the mob, which is pretty funny in and of itself, I think. Let's go over the cast real quick. Jaju Pitts plays Aunt Emma, Roger Pryor as Terry Connors, Douglas Fowley, Warren Hymer, Gwen Kenyon, Elizabeth Russell, Tristram Coffin plays Flower Henderson, Bud McTaggart as Mickey O'Banion, and Stan Blyston as Detective Miller. Uh, Jaju Pitts does a wonderful job of portraying Aunt Emma uh, and her wholesome and down-to-earth character. She has a hankering for adventure and that makes her all the more fun to watch. I would like to point out briefly that Jaju Pitts wasn't all that old when she played the role, but she does play it very well. She plays it convincingly and that's really the most important part about it. I think she was probably in her early 40s at the time and it's never specified how old Aunt Emma is supposed to be, so uh, she has decent chemistry with actor Roger Pryor, who plays Terry Connors, the newspaper reporter, who is a, a stand-up guy, but he just can't catch a break. Um, there are a number of excellent scenes between the two of them 
uh, they have some great dialogue, especially when they're sitting at the bar at Flower Henderson's nightclub. Um, Aunt Emma is asked what she wants to drink, and she mentions something about having a glass of port before bed, but she's not going to bed. And then she comes right out and asks, what's a zombie? <laughs> Terry just kind of looks at her and in a very fatherly fashion says, a zombie's not for you. And then he turns to the bartender and says, give her a horse's neck. The, the back and forth between the two is uh, undeniably entertaining. And it, there's sort of a flip-flop between the two throughout the movie. You have Aunt Emma, who is almost the motherly sort, and is trying to better people's lives with her sage advice. And then you have Terry at the bar and the the, uh, the nightclub itself trying to keep her at trouble at the same time. It's, it's hilarious. The rest of the cast does a fantastic job with their performances, although none of them are really featured as heavily as uh, Pitts and Pryor. They all perform their, their characters notably, and there are really no disappointments. Uh, Maris kind of joins the team, as it were, through the second half of the film, but she doesn't make uh, any major appearance until uh, right around when they get to the nightclub. The direction is straightforward and to the point for this one. There could be more dynamic uh, camera work on this one, but the on-screen action doesn't really require it. Being the B-movie that this is, the production value is its simple and straightforward and to the point fairly often, but it, used a lot, it, it utilizes the detail to make the sets and the characters believable, and that's the most important part of it. The music is by Edward J. K. K. A. Y. is his last name. Uh, there isn't a lot of music in this film, but the music that, that does show up along the way is primarily in the nightclub sequences. The music fits the sequences, and it's not overdone, it's not obtrusive, it just fits and kind of fills in with the, uh, the background. It's kind of like a background presence, if you will. Uh, Gwen Kenyon who played Maris, sings a song called I Can't Get You Out of My Mind by Harry Tobias and Edward K. There was a song by that name, the same name, but a different song in the naughty 90s, which was an Abbott and Costello film that came a few years later. Um, different song, but both movies had the same director, Gene Yarborough. So there you go. The pacing is a bit slow, but the dialogue and the characters make it an engaging film to watch. Enough to show that you don't really need a lot of fast-paced action and special effects to enjoy the movie. There's not a lot of excess, as I've been kind of hinting at, but the film is solid entertainment, so I'm going to give it a thumb up. I'm going to give it three and a half stars out of five, and I do recommend it. Uh, I gotta thank Jerry over at DrMacro.com as always. Only one poster from him this time, but it is a good poster and I do appreciate him helping me out on yet another review. Um, go check out his website for all those high definition scans of uh, posters, uh, pictures of movie actresses and so on and so forth on his website. I'll leave a link in the description. Thank you all for watching. I have more of these planned. I've got another comedy planned for the next one. Uh, please like the video if you enjoyed it, if you found it a little bit uh, helpful and informative regarding your search for old movies to watch. Please subscribe for more coming soon. And as always, I look forward to seeing all of you in my next review.